couple of questions that we have time for, please. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Martin, this was a very exciting and inspirational presentation. Um, you spoke about net zero, and many companies today are struggling with the first step. Where do we start? What, and you have started, of course, uh, a few years ago in this journey. You started with your setting targets and, and then reducing carbon emissions, and now, now you're talking about net zero. What advice can you give to these companies uh, who, of course, don't have the same scale as you, uh, but where do they start? What, what, can you, uh, what guidance can you provide to them? I would say it definitely starts with the transparency about uh, the own situation. Uh, we took quite some time to really understand where the CO2 comes from, how the technology portfolio has to develop and to tackle with it. And then, as I said, you need a lot of sense of reality to actually what is possible and what not. You can be carried away by this topic and you are far away from economics. And I think then to put them into a chain and actually with the abatement costs, uh, you have to actually make a detailed plan. I think just talking about the target and not having underlying projects, how you really uh, want to achieve that is, I think, not possible. So you have to really analyze and study yourself. And the second part is, Dependent also from where the, the main activities of your company are, you have to talk with politics uh, because we need framework conditions to keep business cases in these transformations. I can, and I have not stressed that uh, I could tell you hours about what's going on in Europe with the Green Deal, which is actually not encouraging to generate these uh, business cases, while the IRA, which we just see out of the US, is exactly the opposite. It yeah. is actually creating a business case to facilitate transformation, yeah. where in Europe you generate a regulation to enforce transformation. And I think it's no surprise that most probably the American way will be the more um, successful. So I think this is the two ingredients I would recommend every company. Be clear about where you are in your situation, where you see it, who comes from, have a detailed plan, and talk with politics what the framework conditions are to deliver. Excellent. Wise words. Thank you so much. Um, the second question we have for you is, um, we are witnessing unprecedented levels of collaboration within the industry, and this goes across the value chain, even amongst competitors, to find sustainable solutions. And um, this includes a very exciting e-cracker that you have announced with Savik and Linda, and which you presented to us a few minutes ago. In your view, how important today is collaboration to extract these um, value-adding um, innovations that can help solve the society's many challenges? Well, I think if we have one new learning, all of us, as proud as we might be for our companies, and BSF is 157 years old, we cannot win this race alone. Uh, and I think this is a, a learning everywhere. I was also very, very positive to hear from the country here to invite even more um, investors and, and joining uh, forces. I think we, we have to bring our expertise together. We have also to share the risk. We have actually, actually also to share the resources. It's all very expensive, and I think we can do that together. And if you think about the uh, example of the e-furnace, uh, then I think this is a good one because we all buy our steam crackers from two, three companies in the world. Why should we not develop uh, an electrical furnace together? It's not differentiating. We can actually do this together. And so I'm very, very happy that Sabic and BSF and also Lindy joined on this. And then we will learn from that and apply. And uh, I can only encourage all of us to give up our pride sometimes to do everything alone and also to think in new forms of collaboration because it's not only on the same stage. I think it is also when you think about recycling um, the chemical industry has to learn you have to cooperate also with the waste side because it is also a lot of organization and building up new value chains over there. So I think this opens up also a lot of uh, business models and um, is, I think, a, a positive sign because at the very end, if you want to deglobalize the, the globe, we have to get closer together. Excellent. Dr. Martin, it was such a pleasure to have you with us. And I, I thank you once again on behalf of GPC and the entire audience. Thank you very much. Thank you.